vision for a just world began early on, when I saw my parents, immigrants from Pakistan, strive to be seen. My mom came to the US without knowing English and took classes at night to be heard. My dad, may he rest in peace, sacrificed so much for us to get an education, because to him, education was liberation. Their investment in me was so much more meaningful, knowing our ancestry came from colonization, where our brown skin was seen as less than. So now, I'm a community organizer in South LA. My job is to work within congregations to find grassroots leaders and to develop them so that they can advocate for issues that matter to them. Power to the people. I do this work because as a child of immigrants, I believe we have the choice to evoke our power and to dictate how policies impact us. The stakes are high because if we don't, the, the decisions will be made without us. So what is a South Asian woman doing organizing black and Latino families, many Muslims? Because I believe that every person has the right to opportunity, regardless of their background. This is the sunnah as I come to understand it. I believe if the Prophet, peace be upon him, were alive today, he would be working with, strategizing, and working with the overlooked and impoverished communities. We know this isn't a just society. Muslims are mapped and profiled. Islamophobia is rampant, even though different communities experience it differently. We know that African Americans are more likely to get harsher prison sentences than their white counterparts. They're also more likely to be brutalized by the police than other races. This speaks to institutional racism. It's what's happening in Ferguson and what happened many years ago in South LA when it burned. We know that the jails and prisons in California are mostly filled with black and Latino men. We know that the response to drugs being rampant in communities was to imprison them rather than provide them with the rehabilitative treatment that they need. This reminds me of a colleague at Homeboy Industries, another place I organize that provides services to ex-gang members. He told me that he was imprisoned for a drug addiction and all he wanted was treatment and it was never offered that. The prison system was a use as a way to rehabilitate him and we know that the prison system only makes things worse. Many like my friend made decisions based on life experiences of lacking opportunity. This is all to say that there's systemic racism in this country today which comes from a history of otherizing. I'm also reminded of one of my leaders a black Muslim from South LA. I love the guy. He got involved in our Proposition 47 campaign by doing civic engagement work, knocking on doors, calling. Prop 47, what we, which we won, took six nonviolent felonies and turned them into misdemeanors. The passage was a huge victory because while my friend is a pillar of the community, his record from 20 years ago still follows him. Prop 47 gave him and many others a second chance to find more gainful employment. Another result of institutional racism is that when someone gets out of prison, they're 70% likely to get back because there's no investment in services like reentry, housing, jobs. What is someone supposed to do? So what's our responsibility as Muslims? We must first ask ourselves, how does racism exist within us? Do we see a person of a different race as not our own? If so, why? Our Muslim communities incorporate the same racial hierarchy that the rest of America does. A common criticism of immigrant Pakistani or South Asian mosques is that they are not in solidarity with their African American brothers and sisters. If we're supposed to be living examples of the Prophet's message, then we have to address this question. How will we deal with the racial hierarchy that exists inside our communities? God is challenging us on this. He is telling us that if we can figure this out, we will build Muslim power in a revolutionary way in this country. God said, I've made you into nations and tribes so that you may know one another. 
But do we really know one another? Or do we keep ourselves separate so that we all suffer? This ummah is not fully an ummah until we know what our brothers and sisters in different communities are going through. Think about Hajj, the day of Arafat, the day where we wear shrouds that remove all of our worldly adornments. We are the same to God, begging for his mercy. If God sees us all the same, black, white, brown, woman, man, then how do we need to see each other better? And this is where our collective power lies. If we build coalitions across races, if we challenge the existing racial stratification, we can build Muslim power that will yield attention at decision-making tables to allow us to shape our narratives from the driver's seat. I want to be clear that this isn't just about building Muslim power to me. People's basic rights aren't being met. I'm standing here because I too have benefited on the backs of the oppressed. I'm living on land that was taken from native communities. So I ask myself and you, how can we recognize the privilege that we've been given and use it to dismantle oppressive structures? While we've benefited from the oppression, we've also benefited from movements of people who have fought the system. We've all benefited from the civil rights movement from the women's liberation movement, from the Chicano movement, and so many others. Now imagine with me, meeting the Prophet This is the same man who was found crying one day. The companion said, what makes you cry, O Messenger of Allah? He said, I miss my brothers. They said, are, you not, are we not your brothers, O Messenger of Allah? He said, no, you are my companions. My brothers are those who will follow me without ever having met me. We are those brothers and sisters. We are the ones he wept for. What will we say to him when we see him? This is the man that loved Bilal, the freed black slave that gave the call to prayer. How did how did we carry on his work of bringing people together? Did you challenge your own implicit biases and prejudices? Did you smile regularly to someone you didn't know? Did you act in humility? What will you say? Imagine that moment and live that way now. Thank you.